Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. The Garcia Gallery in the Sun is a 10-acre historic landmark, and it's nestled in the foothills of the Santa Catalina Mountains in beautiful Tucson, Arizona. And it was actually opened up in 1965, and it is home to over 15,000 originals of Ted de Grazia art pieces, including oil paintings, watercolors, ceramics, and sculptures. And there's also six permanent collections on display, and they have rotating exhibits every year, well, all throughout the year, I should say. And so you should go to degrazia.org. Gal- uh, I'll get it straight. Go to degrazia.org. Um, it's a really one of these Tucson treasures. So if you come to Tucson or you live in Tucson, you should check it out and go more than once a year because of these different exhibits that come come out. But we're going to talk about a permanent exhibit today. We're going to talk about Cabeza de Vaca, a collection of uh, Ted de Grazia. And we have Lance Labor. We call him the Tucson dude. He's joining us. He is the executive director of de Grazia Gallery in the Sun. He's here on Big Blend Radio today to talk about these paintings. And I don't know, maybe he has more than paintings because you never know with Ted de Grazia. But how are you doing, Tucson? I'm good, Lisa. How are you? I know you're laughing. I, I, that was a good intro, right? Uh, yes, it was good. <laughs> now, am I right about about when the gallery opened in 1965? Like that? Um, well, actually, um, a little bit. You're you're right and wrong at the same time. The the, oh, the main funny. gallery that we have, a big giant gallery, uh, De Grazia finished in 1965, but. His original gallery was there and ready, uh, you know, to to look at paintings uh, in uh, 1952. So he was on the property here for a long time. Now he he traveled a lot, and and everyone uh, said to Grazi. I mean, he he's known as being the world's most reproduced artist, and he's done just so much. He traveled to Mexico. He was originally from Morenci, and I want to say that because. We are coming up to his birthday, June 14th, and you always have cake and a party. So we, we do. Get, we like cake. And, cake um, and ice cream all day long. Oh, and ice cream. And the and the gallery is free to go to for this day. Yes. It's, it's the Grazia Day here in Tucson. So um, June 14th, everybody, because, you know, he was born on Flag Day. So that's awesome. That is that's right. I remember it every year. It's like, it's Flag Day. It's the Grazia's birthday. <laughs> that's what, Very um, good. But, uh, you know, what's, what's interesting is he traveled a lot. And, you know, we've talked about this on shows with you before and just in, in person. We always get people like, whenever we do anything about Degrazi in the magazine, on the website, radio shows, we, oh, well, I have this painting, or he was here in this town. And then I'm like, Lance, was he there? Was he here? Like, he traveled this country and Mexico. And did he did he ever, like, go international outside of Mexico and North America? Um, well, I know he was in Guatemala. Uh, they, you know, I think, uh, uh, they did some traveling a lot as tourists too, but, um, he did most of his, his, uh, traveling that had to do with his art in Arizona, uh, you know, Northern Sonora, Mexico. He did go down to Mexico city, met Diego Rivera. Um, but, um, he stayed, you know, he stayed pretty close to home when, uh, once the main gallery was made and he had a lot of business going on, uh, you know, cause they were swamped with people here. Uh, they were doing, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, uh, yearly, you know, 150,000 people, uh, in a very, you know, little gallery. Uh, it's a lot of people. That so. is a lot. That is a lot. And, mm. and, and so, you know, he built this gallery with his friends you know it, the local uh native americans and yeah it's yaki indian friends the yaki's okay so it's specifically them i didn't know if they told them um yeah he had he had uh told them friends and i'm sure they helped him too um you know uh, everybody helped him he just never knew who was going to show up the next morning whoever got drunk the night before didn't show up the next day so he never knew who his crew was going to be well, don't look at me, man. Don't look at me. I can feel your eyes across this phone. But no, I'm kidding. Uh, but, but there's six permanent collections in the gallery, and this is something because he always paints in these series, and it's really interesting because when you have these rotating exhibits, um, there's always these collections. I know right now you have uh, the, the uh, chickens 
the graziest chickens, and then you also have the desert dwellings, and we've and the you know, also the encaustic paintings uh, from the 1950s. So, and and that has a collection of different things. But he gets into, does he just get like a bee? He got a bee in his bonnet. I'm going to do this, and he does a series, or does it go with him also being kind of a storyteller because he also wrote and uh, not? Uh, you know, he 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 painted individual paintings for a while and then he started painting series series of paintings and in those series of paintings one of those was this cabeza de vaca uh which is the story of a a, a, a spanish explorer uh who came to the new world and um so that's that that's uh one of the series he did okay so we got to talk about cabeza de vaca because um, it, we talked last time was uh, De Grazia and Padre Kino. Uh, you also have the Papago Indian Legends collection, the Yaqui Easter, which goes with also the fountain that you have outside, um, and also the bullfight. Uh, but Cabeza de Vaca, I, it's actually really, when, when we go to the gallery, I always go there because it's, number one, I think very different to what he's done in the past and or in the future, but it's just this very... It's almost like some of the paintings are like collages, telling such a story of so many people in one painting is is, is amazing to me. And yeah, it's it's um it's it's just that you know really uh there are a couple of paintings that he did one in particular that I don't think he could fit any more people into a line, yeah, yeah. Uh, thousands yeah. and thousands. But um, this is a very very uh, interesting story, true story, very sad. Uh, it was a very ill fated. Uh, expedition and uh the uh what happened was uh uh cabeza de vaca came to the new world in five ships and they um they had about 600 or 700 men uh and they landed in florida uh, you mind if i tell you the story no, yeah no go for it this is i okay. was going to say this is back in the 15 27 1527 this this whole ordeal went from 1527 to 1536 wow. and um they landed in uh uh Galveston I'm sorry they landed in uh, uh Florida and got off the ship and they had already hit a hurricane uh so things were already moving badly uh, other men had already died and uh, so they were started tromping through the swamps in Florida and everybody everybody was getting uh, malaria and uh, so men started to die and they decided uh, they were looking for gold specifically they were looking for the seven cities of gold and um, they didn't find quite what they were looking for in Florida and got back on the boat and um, the ships went to uh, Galveston Bay uh, off the coast of Texas, and they got off the ship and started walking. And so, uh, really, they were the first non-Indians. They were the first Europeans in, in uh, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. So, um, to make a long story short, uh, of the six or seven hundred men, only four survived this this ordeal. Um, uh, as they wandered the uh, the the south the desert southwest without any clothes on for uh, uh, nine years, uh, and by the time they were done, there were only four men left, and one of them was Cabeza de Vaca, uh, the captain. So that's uh, that's the basic story, and De Grazia just you know tells the story from the very beginning uh, using his paintings, uh, oils. It's a com combination of oil paintings and uh, watercolors and some uh, uh, pen and ink sketches. Mm -hmm. And um, there's there's interesting paintings. There's paintings where uh, the men, they were starving, and, and he's, he's painted uh, them eating their horses uh, and, uh, you know, wow. starving in the desert. Uh, uh, having hallucinations, you know, uh, going yeah, yeah. going uh, crazy. Uh, it's very interesting. I I think it, to me this this is because it just I, I'm always into the you know the explorers and these expeditions and you know you think you know 200 years later almost uh, 250 years later 1776 we have Juan Batista coming through our area here in Tucson and you know and that was connected with Padre Quina which we right about right before. And you think about how his expedition is la, 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 you know, it's not, but I mean, it was hard, but 
they didn't go through the hell that Cabeza de Vaca and, and, you know, coming from Spain, I mean, it's amazing how long, how Spain just continued. When we think about, you know, England and, you know, how they wanted to dominate the world basically. And, but Spain, I mean, they really went for it. Yeah, I mean that was the colonial time, you know. They were they yeah. were colonizing and and they were out for gold. The uh the uh, Spaniards were looking for riches and uh they were looking to uh convert the Indians uh, at the point of a gun. So, um you know, they had a, a dual purpose and uh neither neither purpose was very good. At least for the native people that lived there. A nice concept. We're going to convert you to Christianity by gunpoint. I know, and and we're going to cut your hair off. No, that's yeah. You're going to you're going to believe that what we tell you, and you're you're going to do it, or you you'll die. And uh, unfortunately, you know, they kind of got their way in the end. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And this is all about the seven cities of gold. And and what's interesting too, when you think about Cabeza de Vaca coming out here. And who who was left out of the four men was Cabeza de Vaca, Alonso Castillo, Andres Dorantes, and his slave Esteban, and an Arab Moor from Morocco. That's amazing. <laughs> like That's crazy. So this was like a you know what a four people going through. I wonder what it was like for Esteban, this the slave. I mean, I wonder if you know when you think about because they really did slave people up. I mean, it was, oh yeah. Well, actually, you know, he 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 must have uh, realized that because uh, it must have been pretty miserable because he stayed in the New World of the of the four men that were were rescued. The the Spaniards rescued them in uh, 1537 and took them back to Spain. And uh, Cabeza de Vaca and the two other uh, white men went back. And um, Esteban stayed in the New World. He married an Indian woman and probably lived happily ever after. Wow. Wow. Hey. So this so this is interesting too because when you think about this being like fifteen twenty seven to fifteen thirty seven, this whole you know, America wasn't, you know, America at this point. This was I mean, when we think about the Wild West, this was like Really this this was untouched. This was untouched wilderness. Uh, you know, there were still buffalo, and they were still, uh, you know, it was just a, uh, it was wilderness. And uh, yeah, you know, the uh, and I I I forgot to tell you, you know, you know why they called him Cabeza de Vaca? No. Well, usually when the expeditions were going, there were people following them in in subsequent expeditions. And they would be walking along a trail, and and if a road split, say a road went right and went left, well, he would take a cow skull and he would put it on a rock, like on the right side of the road, and that would tell the people that were coming behind them which way to turn. And so that's how he got the nickname Cabeza de Vaca, head of the cow. Wow. I didn't know that. I I knew that's interesting. Skull of a cow, but I didn't know why. And that's interesting because when you think about we were doing so many shows lately on these explorers and expeditions like Cabrillo. Cabrillo was fascinating because he was actually one of the first journalists uh, coming in at, on San Diego, you know, where it's now San Diego. And we have Cabrillo National Monument out there. But also he was going, he was supposed to do the Northwest Passage going up towards San Francisco. And then he got ill and died. And when you think about like they were trying to chart the world and he wasn't, he was pretty I think it was just after Cabeza de Vaca. I have to look up the numbers, but or the dateline. But they were trying to chart and map. And, you, and we were talking about this on the show the other day with Glenn Burroughs. He um, does, you know, family history from Norfolk, England. And what we're finding is all these connections between England, obviously, and here. And it's fascinating. They are talking about uh, Captain Vancouver and how they just sailed out. And they had no maps. And they were going by the stars. And you know, when you think about Cabeza de Vaca, that's the same thing. You're not only going up to find the seven cities of gold, you don't really have these kind of maps that we have. We don't have Rand McNally, we don't have GPS. They went out and they're going by the stars and then you're getting delirious. All those, you know, it's crazy what they what they set out to do. Um, I think it's amazing. Yeah, well, it's amazing what what the uh, uh, yeah. the pull of gold will do. You know, people will do pretty crazy things to to uh, get a lot of gold, and 
Uh, that's what they did. It's interesting how humans prescribe a value to something inanimate like gold. Right. You can't, eat it, can't eat it, you know, and diamonds and all that. I mean, it's just a rock. Hmm. And this is all, so, you know, it's so it's, it's interesting how it gains this huge value that people will go out on a ship, not having directions, gaze at the stars and go turn left at the humpback hmm. whale, hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. Well, people will die for gold uh, and make no qualms about it, you know. Yeah, isn't and, that true? and the same route, when you think about it, he came through in Texas and Galveston, that area, like you're talking about, when he came through there, going up through Texas and coming through Arizona and New Mexico. And then we had Coronado, who came in through, mm -hmm. you know, southern Arizona on a uh, little more east of us, Sierra Vista area. He was after the seven cities of gold. Then we had Juan Batista later. It's kind of like they went in the succession to get up there. And I mean, what I mean, what was the seven? Who who told them? Hey, the seven cities of gold. I, I've got to go back in my history. On yeah, that. I think you. I think a lot of this was legend. And yeah. you know, they Maybe. believe this. You know, the lost Dutchman gold mine. The, oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, all these legends about gold, and people don't. You know, they don't give them up. And back in 1527, I think. You know, yeah. maybe, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they thought they'd find it. And it was all about Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's, it's interesting how that's an art community. So did, did De Grazi ever really hang out in New Mexico? You think about his Southwest art. Like, he, he's an, I think he's a storyteller of the history of the Southwest. And um, A little bit, yeah. De Grazi did go to New Mexico a little bit. Um, it's interesting, you know, he, he, he didn't really um, do uh, a lot of, or any paintings I know of, of the Pueblo Indians, uh, per se, I, I, I really haven't, uh, uh, looked that closely, but I don't think he did, uh, which is surprising, you know, uh, all of the, all of the places in, in New Mexico, uh, and, and he, I know he would travel to New Mexico just to paint a wagon, uh, you know, to get an authentic wagon, he would drive all the way to, uh, you know the to uh, was it the uh, oh gosh, uh, Window Rock and Ship Rock, you know, uh, on the the uh, Navajo Valley Reservation. Area. Yeah, Monument Valley and right, Monument. Oh, that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah, yeah, that whole area is like a well, I mean, where the, the Four Corners, you know, we've got that too out here, and it's 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 really a, the other thing is like how diverse Arizona is a state as a state. I mean, you can be in the snow, you can be like out in the petrified forest and then next thing you know here you are hanging out with saguaro cactus you know saguaro i'm saying it right now lance very good that every time on a show with you I'm like saguaro. they're all blooming you're missing them but no no they're all they're, they bloomed early this year what's with yeah. that do you think it's because it, it's weird this year they seem to be early and you know bigger and more <sighs> i don't know i uh, just hoping for some rain that's all i'm ready for monsoons i want i want a big monsoon. Yeah, I agree. I think nature yeah. does this thing. You bloom early when you're in need because yeah. flowers drop the seeds so that you can keep your species going. So when you have like a drought, flowers bloom early and for shorter time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because the uh, uh, cactus seed grows uh, by humidity, and so the I know that the uh, like the saguaros are timed to the monsoon uh, yeah. because they, you know, they flower, they, they fruit, the fruit falls off, the birds eat it, they drop it, and then it rains, and they don't sprout from rain, but they sprout from the humidity, um, and so they're kind of timed with the, with the monsoon, which is kind of cool. I think it's cool, and I can't wait for the monsoon, but there is a humidity we we walk in the morning, probably like quarter to five right now, but it's changing every day as we get towards summer. And you can see how fast the seasons are changing. You know, yeah. the more we've been living here, the more we're watching it. And you can feel in the morning, you still have that little bit of a chill factor. I mean, light chill, but you can, it, it's almost like it's, it's that, that time between, you know, that dusk, dawn, no, it's not dusk, but dawn time where it's, it's like we're trying to hang on to the humidity and the sun's saying, no, no, I'm going to come and get you. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's five o'clock in the morning It's and it's only 97 degrees. Already. I know, right? We're getting there, right? It's like this crazy <laughs> thing that's happening, but 
I, I do want to touch on this because one of the things on the property at, at the Graza Gallery, and I want people to know this, is this is a 10-acre property where it's a, it is a National Historic Landmark, as it should be. And not only you've got the gallery, which is this incredible adobe building and very unique. And um, if you're into architecture, this is a place to go. Um, you have the natural surroundings. You see the mountains, which is beautiful. And you've got natural, you know, you've got picnic benches and stuff. So, you, but in the summer, go early or later for that. But um, you've, you've got like the typical Southwest, or I should say Tucson garden that's in like a native, native, right? But when you go into the gallery, you also have that courtyard, which is very Southwest. And I love how he did the courtyard around how the gallery works around. And in the center of that courtyard, your cactus garden, I think, should be on a map of gardens. Awesome. I, I really do believe that. It's so beautiful. Who started the garden? Was it him or was it Mary and his wife? Um, you know, that's a good question. Uh, I know that uh, his grandson, uh, a man named Scott Grieve, uh, did a lot of the planting when DeGrazia first uh, finished the buildings out here. The, he let Greg, uh, I'm sorry, he let Scott uh, uh, plant. So it was mostly his grandson that started it. And he did a. He was a. He was a, just a real. Uh, he was like a botanist, that, you know. As a kid, he he just loved plants, and he knew what he was doing. And uh, you know, he he planted all kinds of cactus and uh, trees and whatever. It's beautiful in there. I love mm. it in there. That's that's such a special place in the, you know the gallery. So you got to go for plants, art, architecture, history, mm -hmm. and you are getting the history of the Southwest when you look at you know these permanent collections. To me. You go back over and over again. And each time I go in the gallery, I'm like, I didn't see this part of the painting. You know, just every time there's something new. And it is especially the Cabeza de Vaca to me that I just, it, that journey was insane. And you think about how many lives were lost. And it was, and you think about even surviving in the desert those years and, you know, hallucinated <laughs> you know, how many times do you hallucinated in the desert i mean you think about how the desert is in the summer and you're out there in the middle of nowhere going like dude what up you know yeah they didn't have any air conditioning back in those days no no and no ac you have to learn how to live like the animal you know and it's it's you know learn to live out in a place that you've never been before that's the thing one thing about like native american tribes that you know lived and and learned but these people just came off a ship and wakey, wakey, hello, this you're welcome. Not very nice, you know. Yeah, you live in Europe, you you, you uh, live on a boat, and then all of a sudden you're cast into the desert, um, you know, and you got to yeah, figure out how you're going to survive. Um, not too many of them did. They didn't survive. Oh, wow. wow. This is so hot. Everyone, you got to go see the exhibit and also uh, the exhibits that come through all the time. You change them up, which is really cool. Um, everyone, again, DeGrazia's hot, exa uh, hot wax encaustic paintings from the 1950s. Uh, that's on display until September 5th, 2018. DeGrazia's chickens and DeGrazia's de desert dwellings. That's on until January 30th, 2019. So keep up with that. And if you're in Tucson around uh, June 14th every year, uh, you can go have cake, ice cream, and free admission into the gallery and uh, go do it. I mean, it's a, it's a really, really unique place. So um, everyone, again, degrazia.org. I get the website right now. And uh, go check it out and go visit. And they're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well under the same name. So thank you so much for joining us, Lance. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Nancy, for having me. Always, yeah. always fun. It's always fun. And we're going to play some music now, and now let's see if I can get my Tucson lingo correct, right? I say saguaro correctly, okay? <laughs> now let's see. Te quiero mucho. <laughs> Did I get that right? No? It's a song from Please Remember Me, the album from De Grazia. So is it Te quiero mucho? Did I get it right? Close enough. Okay, he's like, I'm not touching it. Okay, that just tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me now about my, my No way. <laughs> no, no. But everybody uh DeGrazi has got this album out. Um they found the music uh years ago, uh manuscript for the music and his son Domingo de Grazia uh got together uh with some local musicians. It, it, it's the jazz orchestra from the, from the Tucson Symphony. Am I getting that straight? Always it was the Tucson Jazz Academy. 
Yeah, they mm -hmm. recorded an album um, with the Grazia's music, Ted de Grazia, and then also Domingo's music. But uh, Te Quiero Mucho, uh, this is the song we're going to play now. And again, the album is Please Remember Me. You can get it at the gallery. And you can also shop online at the gallery. Go to degrazia.org. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening to our show, as always, here on Big Blend Radio. Uh, we air live Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and Fridays and Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Just go to BigWinRadio.com for the schedule. You can listen as shows air or anytime on demand. All the links are there. Thanks so much, Lance. Here it is. Are you ready? I'm ready. Te, te quiero mucho.